the opening of this opera was during the conquest of Algeria. And nobody talks about the conquest of Algeria and you have no voice against colonialism on that time, except maybe Eugène Scribe, who knows the violence of the French army uh, in Algeria. And so it's at the end of the story, I mean, in, in the 60s, during the revolution um, of the Algerian against um, French colonialism, that could fit with the story of the Sicilians and the French. It's not really relevant that it's in Sicilia. And I doubt that the people of the time knew really the story of the Vepre Sicilian. So it's not really a problem. It's just a mask to talk about the violence of power, of violence of dictature, and in many ways, violence of colonialism, which is uh, very seldom in, in French writing and, and, and French composers. <laughs> Well, I think that uh, basically Verdi music remains Verdi music, but uh, when uh, we switch from uh, a very transparent syllabic uh, language like Italian and uh, we go into a different uh, language, which is uh, French, in some way touches the the line of the of the bel canto line of course of the recitativi and of of the tutti but uh, what remains in the core is that there are the feelings the sentiments the strengths of uh, verdi music because when you speak Probably. french you have the feeling you sit in a, in a very fancy salon and you uh, <laughs> no, no. and there's no uh, energy in that language it's uh, and probably he, he had a lack of something in the language itself to to do this the spinto yeah. uh, yeah. of it we we we, uh, we see it for example during our rehearsals also in the recitativi for example yes uh, how the recitativi timing changes with the french language rather than italian language <laughs> It's the Grand Opera, and it's right to say that Meyerbeer created the um, style of it, but it's the end of it. And probably Verdi had to work in that frame, the Grand Opera, long, historical, with ballet music, etc. But also he felt probably free enough to create his own opera. Yes, I, th I think that uh, he's trying. He has to do a grand opera, so it's, it's really a, a, a try. And I, f I find actually quite uh, moving to see how Verdi tries to enter into, into this genre, which is actually absolutely not typical for the, oh, Italian, yeah. for the Italian composer of the, of the time. Yes? So I would say, bravo Verdi, it's, it's, a, very good, it's a very good try, yes? He, he really enters in this uh, grand opera. It's probably one of the best Meyerbeer. <laughs> the orchestra part is uh, very elaborated. If we just we start uh, opening the pages of the uh, Sinfonia of the overture, actually it's a tricky page for the orchestra for which uh, the strings and all the winds have really to show a big amount of talent and uh, virtuosity, virtuosity to play it. So who nowadays can write a five hours long story about love and revolution and war 
uh, with 300 people on stage. I mean, the directors of the opera were really crazy on that time. The, the ambition, the artistic, the poetical, the political ambition of those kind of, of masterpieces are really amazing when we see it. And uh, this is something I love to say that every opera in a certain moment was a contemporary opera. So, which is the borderline between entertainment and uh, the fact that when you stand up after the last applause, you go home and you think, okay, I have to think about it. Mm. What, 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 I, what entered in my soul, in my heart about what I've seen. But some operas are not contemporary anymore, and this one is. And of course, when we listen to that story, when, when we listen to that music, uh, we have the feeling that to talk about the present days and, and what's going on in the world, we have that, and it's still relevant.